hydroponic lighting is the same as dirt lighting is the same as any kind of supplemental lighting. Um, it's very important, I've found in all applications, to use 50%, 50% of metal halide and high pressure sodium mixed together. Um, they put out a broad enough spectrum that covers everything the plant needs and they have the energy to power the, the photosynthesis that drives the, 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 the reactions that the plant are using that the plant uses to fuel for energy. Fluorescents have their use. I've used them for clones, for things like that, but as far as the LED lights, I don't see any future in them because they don't put enough photons of energy into it. I really have a pet peeve with the digital ballast. I've consulted for so many grows I can't name where the first thing I tell everybody to do is to take the digital ballast and throw them away. The technology's not ripe yet. Myself, I use old analog ballast. Um, I swear, by <laughs> Hydro Farm, it's like, uh, there's a few companies I use over and over and they don't pay me to say this. It's because it's what I've used for years and I've never burned a grow down and it always works. And it's old tried and true things like General Hydroponics, Hydro Farm. These companies have been around forever for a reason because this stuff works. It's like, but the old analog ballast I found to be much superior in many ways. Now they have some new fancy ones that have a switch on them where they got the igniter wired in and you can switch it to metal halide or high pressure sodium and that makes a lot of sense. B, always hook them up on 220 because 110 is so horribly inefficient. It, it uses a lot more power and it's a lot more dangerous. As far as the digital ballasts go, they fire the bulbs too hard. They don't have a soft enough firing sequence yet to make it work. So they, they just eat bulbs. And the biggest expense in doing a big grow is um, your bulbs. Because if you're just going by four, you know, that, that's not too bad. But if you've got 40 or 50 bulbs, then they're very important that, that they work because these high pressure sodium metal halide bulbs, they don't dim out like incandescent bulbs people are used to seeing. They actually fade off in efficiency and one of our highest expenses is electricity. So if we're going to run all this electricity, we want to keep it down. And the first thing that we always do is to take a basic photograph meter and it doesn't really matter what kind of units it's being measured in. It matters just that it's measuring intensity. You take a ruler from one foot when you buy new bulbs always and from the glass and you take this and you put it to it and you get a reading and you write it down. And that way every two months you go back with the same ruler to the same light with the same meter and it don't matter if it's measured in foot candles or lumens or some kind of measurement. It's a measure of intensity. Uh, really, only thing that really matters is PARs, but we'll go, that's a whole other subject for another day we'll go into. But really, all you're really wanting to do is to measure the intensity of the bulb. And every two months, keep measuring because these bulbs will fall off in efficiency. And I usually change out at about 40-50% and because at that point I'm spending more money on electricity and I'm getting back and bang for buck. It's very important to know when your bulbs are falling off because you have to change them. And that's a big expense in a grow. And that's where I've also found there's no difference between buying these fancy $200, $150 bulbs because they say they hit certain spike better versus the $50 bargain basement high pressure sodium and metal halide bulbs. Because over the life of it, I found if you mix them right, it comes out the same anyways and they're much better if you just make sure you have fresh bulbs in there. But this little cheap meter will tell you when your bulbs are dying. At that point, change them out. That's my biggest problem with digitals. And everybody that does this will see digitals eat bulbs. I usually use a lot more light than people are used to. Like, I learned once you've learned to less the numbers, more the light, and you get a lot more yield as far as weight that stays in a plant. It's not plant material, but it's resin because the lights are so much closer than the sun is. They put this radiation out that the plants convert into energy, so they have a lot more energy to produce resin, which is what makes indoor so much better than outdoor. It's the, the proximity of the radiation source 
It's the fact that we can totally control to the nth degree the part per million of CO2 that controls the feeding of the plant. We can totally control the temperature of the plant. We can totally control contamination factors through ventilation ducts and through cycling and things like that to the degree that could never be done outdoors. That's why I've always joked with people and say that outdoor marijuana is recreational. Greenhouse, it has potential to be medical, but it has to be spent a lot of money for it. But indoors, really medical marijuana because it's only then it can be gotten to therapeutic levels and can pass the purity test.